Alright guys, in this next video we're going to cover sucking chest wound. Um, so this can be any penetrating injury at the chest affecting um, respirations, ventilations. We're going to take lung sounds, they're going to be diminished if they have a pneumothorax um, and eventually if it develops into a tension pneumothorax, what kind of lung sounds would we hear? <laughs> absent lung sounds. That should have been a resounding absent lung sounds. Great. Thank you. Um, and we're going to see bubbling blood coming from the site. And Rowan, what's the first thing you do if you see bubbling blood coming from I'm the gonna site? I'm going to make sure I have my PPE on. She's got her PPE on. I'm going to put direct pressure direct with my pressure, gloves. Direct pressure. And you're going to, what do you want from your partner? Um, Vaseline gauze. So this is an occlusive dressing. An occlusive dressing. Go ahead and open it. And then we're going we're gonna to talk about what makes it an occlusive dressing. All right, so what, what is this? Vaseline. Vaseline. So a piece of gauze soaked in Vaseline because we want help adhering it to the site. And what makes any part of that, what makes anything an occlusive dressing? Uh, it, being it doesn't allow air to move in or out. So what part of this is the occlusive dressing? Um, this part. The wrapper, right? And so what, like we could use a glove if you were that janky about it. We can use a Ziploc bag. Whatever it takes to block air from going in or out, we don't want air to go into the chest. Traditionally, guys, when we breathe, where does go? Where does air go into? Through what? Don't say ears. <laughs> the mouth and the nose. If we had a penetrating injury to our chest, when we inhale, now where else does air go into? The chest. The chest. And so air is collecting in the pleural space, and over time, it's going to develop into a pneumothorax, eventually a tension pneumothorax, if this isn't addressed. Okay, so she's holding pressure, and then she's going to apply the Vaseline gauze. That's fine. You can actually rip the wrapper all the way. Oh my, I'm going to leave it on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, let's leave it on. Uh, you know what? I don't want to leave it on. Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. Awesome. Thank you, Rowan. <laughs> Got a live feed. And then how many sides do we tape it on? Three sides. Why? Um, so we could let the air... Uh, come out from the air and maybe blood come out so the thinking with this guys is as the patient inhales we want air to go into the nose and mouth and no air to go through the chest but as they exhale if there is so much pressure in here the logic is we want air to escape through this fourth open side does that I hope that makes sense um, and over time guys tell me because we are re we continuously reassess lung sounds as you reassess lung sounds, if you hear absent lung sounds, what do we do? You can start to burp the dressing. And what does it mean to, to burp the, the dressing? Lift the when? When do we lift the dressing? Upon exhalation. Upon exhalation. So as the patient is exhaling, we can undo the tape uh, temporarily, just on, on these two sides, and then we're going to burp the dressing when they exhale. Thinking, the logic behind that is to assist the patient in removing the pressure um, from underneath. If you were ALS, you can do a needle decompression, and that's what they would do in the ER. Um, and then definitive care would be a, um, applying a chest tube um, with vacuum or suction applied to the chest tube. Um, but, Roanne, good job. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Yep. Thanks. <laughs>